All right, what is going on, everybody? Uh, what is today? Today is Tuesday, August. August? Yeah, we're still in August. Tuesday, August 20th, I think. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> uh, but no, I figured, you know what? It's a pull day today. I was supposed to be doing some deadlifts. Most importantly, I'm going to be breaking in the new Prime chest supported row. So I figured, why not take you guys along for the ride? Um, we are, I am also planning to do stiff leg deadlifts as kind of my main hinge movement for today because um, I kind of alternate between like a heavy hip hinge every other pull workout. So I've got an A and a B where I alternate between a heavy hip hinge and then just kind of more an isolation focus day. So today is the heavy, day, heavy hinge day and I'm just going to kind of see how I feel because my lower back has been really bugging me yesterday and today. Um, just it's not fully recovered from my last leg day. I think just part of that is introducing a new movement being the prime extension uh, extension prone curl combo. So doing prone curls for the first time in four-ish years, I think. Pretty much since the last time I had a gym membership. Um, <laughs> minus like the jury-rigged prone curl setup that I've done on the lever arms here and there. But no, uh, my body is not acclimated to that movement yet. So I pushed myself pretty hard and I am paying the price for it. <laughs> I am a little sore or a little sorer, more sore, however you want to say it, whatever the proper pronunciation and verbiage is for that, uh, than usual. So yeah, for right now though, I am just sipping on a rain, uh, what is this, white gummy bear, favorite flavor. They were on sale at our local Fred Meyer. I'll probably be picking up some more this week because they're Buy one, get one free for like $2.60, I think. So it's like $1.30 a piece, which is a damn good deal for these things. So yeah, I'm going to drink like half of this. I'm not going to have the whole thing. I'll put the rest in the fridge or my wife can have it when she wakes up for her workout. Because uh, I've already had like 100 milligrams of caffeine earlier. And there's 300 in this whole thing. So I don't want to, I don't want to be drinking that much caffeine, especially at almost two o'clock in the afternoon. So yeah, I'm going to finish off what I'm going to drink from this, finish up my warm-ups, and then we're going to just start off on a pull-down. So even though I am going to be starting, like my first main movements are going to be focused around hamstrings, I like to start off on a pull-down movement just because it kind of helps to warm myself up a little bit more, gets blood flowing, flowing, and then especially when I'm doing a heavy hinging movement, it just kind of helps to prep my back and get it all feeling really good and ready to go, basically. Um, I've found that when I start off with a pulling movement of some type, um, it just feels a little bit better when I get into that heavy set of the uh, hip hinge movement. So yeah, that's the plan for right now. So I will check back in with you guys after I get my warm-ups done and we start on that first exercise. Cheers. Rain, if you want to sponsor me. <laughs> So starting off, just warming up still, nothing too crazy. As I'm warming up, I usually like to kind of sit in the stretch position and just kind of dynamically move through a few different movements, just kind of get everything going. Not doing any crazy weight yet, just getting the blood flowing, getting the body moving. And I usually don't rest too long as I'm jumping up in weight until I get to like my last one or two warmups. And then I might wait a little bit before moving into those. Let's see how this is moving. Yeah, I think I'll call it there. All right, so I'll bump up the weight just a touch. Rest for like 30, 60 seconds. And then we'll jump into our first working set here. Um, probably also gonna throw on straps because it's getting a little warm in the garage and my hands are starting to sweat. So I don't wanna 
Don't want to lose my grip. I don't want to focus on grip strength. Ugh, getting under the damn weight is the hardest fucking part. <laughs> Felt pretty damn good. Oh, bugger. So, yeah. First working set there. Something I really focus on. Oh, sorry. Got something in my eye. Uh, so, yeah. First, uh, first working set. Let me catch my breath. Uh, something I really like to focus on is controlling the weight as much as possible. So, you saw me pause at the bottom and then just let it stretch me all the way back up full stretch all the way to lockout whatever you want to call it and then just cranking it back down as hard as i can we'll try to maintain that form and again pause at the bottom so trying to eliminate as much momentum as i can and just really lock in on the movement that was what eight nine reps eight and a partial something like that so yeah, we'll drop the weight down, do a back offset. Um, see how I'm feeling, if I do a third or not. Uh, I think I'm, I'm feeling pretty good today right now, just from what I can tell. So I think we'll do like a back off into like a rest pause. Kind of been digging the rest pauses the last couple workouts. So I just tend to randomly throw in intensity techniques or modifiers, whatever you want to call them, based on how I'm feeling, whether that's drop sets, rest pauses, uh, set sets, descending sets, super sets, <laughs> all the different things and sets, just based on how I'm feeling for a workout. I don't necessarily have them programmed in. I usually have like the layout of my workout program, so like what I'm doing based on the movements. And my general rep range is aiming for like between 8 to 12, maybe 15 on movements kind of like this. Um, isolation movements, like heavy isolation, or not heavy, but just like strict isolation movements. Closer to like 12 to 20 reps. And then heavy movements, compound movements, focusing like 6 to 10. is the general working range that I tend to focus on, I guess you could say. So, yeah. <sighs> gonna hit the next set here, do a rest pause, and then we'll move on to seated or prone curls. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. Still thinking. <laughs> I'll see how I feel. Okay. Oh, I need to drop the weight a little bit. Drop it down. I was at, what, 210. Drop down to 180. Yeah, that should be good. Should keep me in that 10 to 12 rep range. All right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<sighs> you can take like 10 good breaths, 15 good breaths, and then go again. Aim for like five reps, basically half of whatever I just did. Felt pretty fucking good. Sorry, probably shouldn't be swearing. YouTube's not gonna like that. Am I even in frame? Yes, I am. <laughs> but no, that felt really damn good. So we're gonna move on to seated or prone curls. I think I'm gonna do prone. I kind of feel like laying down. <laughs> okay, let's go. Transition this guy from extensions to prone curls. Just like that, and then we just swing this up, right there. And then for my foot position, eh, I'll see how this feels. One thing with this guy that I've noticed is there's only three positions on the leg roller. So here, here, and then here, right there. One thing I really wish, and what I'm probably going to do, or not probably, but I'm going to one of these days, is you can't see it from there, but maybe I'll show you guys in a second. Drill out a hole between each of those three holes. So there's like a half position. So it could go like there, there, and then there, not just there and there. Um, but yeah, just for my wife and I, in the two times we've already used this, the positions just kind of don't quite fit either of our bodies. It's just a little too far or a little too close. So. As nice as this machine is, I wish it had a little more adjustability there. And then also, just side note, another thing I'm gonna end up doing eventually, drilling out maybe like three more holes along this part right here, because I like to do a lot of other movements with this, or with leg curl and extension machines in general. You guys have seen it if you follow me on Instagram. I usually like to do things like calf raises, um, standing single leg curls. With this particular one, I'll be able to do things like pullovers, kickbacks, all kinds of stuff. So having that extra hole positions, or those extra hole positions will just give me that greater versatility, I guess you could say. But I've rambled enough. Let's get into this, see how this weight feels. Just got 45 on the top pig, and then uh, we'll go on from there and see if I wanna go up much more. Not treating this too much like a working set yet. All right, just warming up the hamstrings. Stretch at the bottom there, all the way up, kick yourself in the butt, and then back down. Okay, yeah, so I think I'm gonna throw on another 25 on the middle peg, and then we'll do like two sets, see how that feels. You can't see me at all. <laughs> oh, come on, so damn high. <laughs> Oh. <sighs> 
Uh, yeah. Whew. All right, that felt pretty damn good. <sighs> so, what was that? 45 on the top peg, 25 middle peg. So I'm gonna do one more set. I think what I'm gonna do is just move the 25 up. So it's kind of like a mechanical drop set. One reason I love the Prime machines so much and why we got them is because of the dynamic loading, essentially. So for those of you that have not used Prime machines, both their selectorized cable-driven machines and the torque arm machines like what we have here, the nice thing about them is you can adjust the resistance curve. So the way I have it set up here, it's loading the lengthened, but it gets or it gets weaker, not weaker, it gets lighter in the shortened. So in the stretch position when my legs are all the way down, the bottom of the at the start of the movement is where it's heaviest. As I come up, bringing my legs closer to full contraction, the shortened position where the muscles are fully contracted, it gets lighter. And then by changing the position of the weights, you can change where you're putting that emphasis. So yeah, that's one reason that I love these machines so much um, and why, in my opinion, they're some of the best on the market. So yeah, let's adjust the weight and then move into the next one. That felt really fucking good. Oh, so, now we're gonna move on to the stiff leg deads. And with my heavy hip hinge, because it's so taxing on my CNS, everything, I only do one working set. So I'll take one working set to all out failure, aiming for that like six to 12-ish rep range. Um, typically like aiming for around eight to 10 and then we'll move on to the next exercise, which I don't remember what that is offhand. I gotta look at my log book. So yeah, oh, let's get set up for that. All right, just warming up still. Oh man, my left hamstring is super freaking tight. So we'll see how heavy we go today with this. throw 25s on and then do another warm-up and then we'll probably hit working weight at like 315 oh, yeah. where's my belt where'd I put it Just want to make sure my back is as protected as possible because like I said it has been bugging me the past couple days <sighs> oh, 
yeah, we'll go up. And then that'll be my working weight. Mm. Oh man, that hit harder than I expected. Oh shit. <clears throat> Come on! That is, that's it for this. <laughs> oh, shit. Man, after that first rep, my glutes started cramping a little bit, which is a little bit odd. Oh, oh. But no, that felt, that felt better than I expected. So, really happy with that. Only nine reps. Couldn't quite get to 10. So, yeah, it's all right. <sighs> rest for a few minutes, catch my breath, and then we'll move on to whatever's next. <sighs> Let's go. All right, so next movement here is going to be <clears throat> some hypers, trying to focus. Come on, make sure it's locked into place there. There we go. So some hypers trying to focus on primarily the glutes with this particular movement. So key to doing that is primarily like the foot position and then also just focusing on how I'm driving through the movement. So you can see with my feet, or I don't know if you can see, maybe I'll get it in the next set, um, but feet are wide, toes turned out, and then as I'm gonna be coming up, not just pulling from my lower back, I'm thinking of driving my hips into the pad as much as I can and squeezing and contracting those glutes. So it's not just a hyperextension, it's emphasizing the glutes. So yeah, <sighs> typically I, or previously I was doing these um, loaded with the lever arms, but that was before we got in the new machines. So I had a little bit more space in front of the rack. Um, and then this was also just positioned like right there. So I could just move it two feet and be ready to go. For now though, I'm just gonna try, see how this feels with the 100 pound kettlebell. If it's not heavy enough, well, We'll adjust that. We'll address that if I need to. Um, I could probably just do dumbbells, but yeah, we'll start here and then see how things go from there. All right. Come on, music. Where'd you go? That's about to go. There we go.
Oh. Alright. Eh, the hundred's not too bad. Uh, so. Yeah. That actually felt pretty good, so I'm gonna stick with the hundred there. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and then maybe next week, might bump it up. Um, if I do bump it up from here, two options. One, I can move this guy out and load a barbell or something. Oh, fuck, excuse me. I drank too much water. Uh, or, I could just grab dumbbells, so. Oh, God damn it, excuse me. Fucking burping to hell. It's just that motion squeezing my stomach and pushing out all the air. But no, other option would be to grab dumbbells. Like I said, I have all the way up to 100, so I could realistically go up to 200 pounds if I were to use straps and just hold on to two dumbbells at the same time. Otherwise, I would have to move this guy and position it to where I could load a barbell, and then I could lo go, uh, load heavier from there if I need to. So, yeah, it's all right. It is what it is, I'm not too concerned about it. This is more of a isolation movement, so I don't necessarily need to go super heavy on it, especially if I do it after heavy stiff leg deadlifts, because I'm not trying to work my lower back, I'm just trying to isolate the glutes, as much as reasonably speaking. So yeah, that's kind of the way I look at it. So, I'm gonna hit one more set, and then we'll move into the actual back portion of our workout. All right, so you can see here, almost finished with my intro workout. I generally don't have the pump in it, um, but because I did the bang as my pre-workout, or at least half of a bang, I threw the pump in this, um, and then my main goal is just to kind of finish it before I get into like the meat of my back workout, so that way it's effective for that portion primarily, because I don't want a nasty pump when I'm doing stiff leg deadlifts or anything like lower back related, because then it just is painful to the point that it gets in the way of my workouts. Um, at least that's for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna chug down the rest of this or at least half of it right now, and then I'll probably do the other half after this just because of how it's pressing on my stomach. And then we're gonna start off on the prime row. It's gonna be a little bit of try, or not trial and error, but a little bit of dialing in where I'm gonna be starting on my weight. Um, but we're gonna be hitting the maiden voyage on that baby. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm excited for that. Oh. All right. Another like 12 reps here. That's it for this movement. On to back. <sighs> Something that is really cool about our machine that is fairly new for Prime is this seat pad, the chest pad. They recently came out with an adjustable version. I think it's compatible with all of their chest supported um, 
rowing type movements, lat pull down machines, that kind of stuff. At least the ones that have this type of seat pad. But no, so as you can see, it can rotate from a pretty steep angle like that all the way up to more of a forward leaning angle. Am I even in frame? I don't know, I can't tell. It's been a while since I've done one of these types of videos. Um, so I'm gonna play around with this. I think I'm gonna start with more of a forward lean to it. Something a little bit more neutral, probably not quite that severe. About like there. Um, and this is gonna be, like I said, just kind of a bit of trial and error getting everything dialed in to where I want it. So I'm gonna go through a couple warm up sets and then I will check back in with you guys once we get to our first kind of working set. I'm probably gonna be doing the majority of my work here today just because I can change the angle of this so I'm able to change how I'm hitting the muscle. Um, and then I'll probably finish off with, I think I kinda wanna try some pullovers on the prone curl. So something that you don't see too often. I think I've seen one other person do them in the past. Um, but it's kind of a fun movement, a little bit of a different variation. Nice added variety to this style of machine. But I'm yapping at this point, so I'll check back in with you guys when I get to the working sets. All right, so now I'm a little upset. I just recorded my first working set here. And uh, apparently my camera died right before I even got into my first damn rep. So yeah, we're gonna move on to the second working set here. Um, you saw me just move some plates up. First set, I had three plates on the top peg, two quarters on the middle. So kind of slightly emphasizing the stretch and then getting a little lighter into the uh, shortened, but I'm really gonna emphasize that stretch position and then as light as possible in the shortened on this one. <sighs> kind of went on this whole like spiel about how much I love this damn machine. Now I gotta do it all over again, uh, but no. These machines are amazing. They are literally just freaking works of art. Um, I have never used a machine that's quite as nice as these guys in terms of just like the resistance curve and how you're able to modify it, the overall feel of it. Um, it is just absolutely fantastic. I honestly am still kind of in shock that we have these in our garage. It's hard to believe at this point. These are pieces that I've dreamed about having for three, four years now, um, pretty much since the first time I tried one or even really laid eyes on one. And to have them in the gym is literally like a dream come true. These are bucket list gym items that I never thought I'd ever have, so yeah. <sighs> but anyway, uh, what else was I saying? Oh, something that I kind of had got in my head was previously doing like all the different lever arm variations and things like that. It's like, I kind of got into my head that, oh, I'm getting pretty damn close to replicating something like this or one of the other types of chest supported prime style machines. But once you really kind of get into a machine like this, there's no comparison. Um, yes, they work similarly to the lever arm variations that I've been doing, but just being able to lock yourself in, just have a machine built for that purpose is just completely night and day different. So I am, like I said, I keep going on about it. I am ecstatic about these machines. But I've rambled on way too long now, so let's get into this second set, and then I'm gonna change things up a little bit. All right. Uh, uh, hardest part is just getting freaking locked into position. Live in that stretch for a couple seconds. Oh, God 
God damn it. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Shouldn't be swearing as much as I am, but it's hard not to. <laughs> oh man, I am so ecstatic right now. All right, let's change it up. I'm gonna change the angle of the seat, drop the weight down a little bit, and we're gonna aim for a little bit more of a lower position row. Might even row with a slightly more underhand grip as opposed to overhand neutral-ish. <sighs> Let's see how this angle feels. <sighs> Come on. There we go. Oh man, that's too far forward. Drop this back a little bit. Right about nine. Yeah. And that's a little more. Two single arm work. Is that 25 45 so 70 pounds on the top peg single arm trying to stack everything over the lat and then on the last couple reps you may have caught it doing a little bit of self assisted reps at the end so catch my breath and then we'll go again for the next set or the next arm <laughs> Mmm. 
Come on. How many more? All the way up. Nice. Last set, last set. what, 11 and a partial or an assisted? <sighs> All right. All right, last movement is going to be, was originally gonna be a cable face pull, so targeting rear delts, but something I've always wanted to try on this machine is a rear delt row. So I've done these on the lever arms in the past, really like them, but I'm gonna try it on this guy and see how it feels, so. Yeah, essentially gonna be really angling myself forward and just strictly pulling as much as I can from the rear delts. Ergo, rear delt row. All right. That's gonna be it. So yeah, that's pretty much today's workout. I used this machine for pretty much every single back movement minus the lap pull downs at the start. Now, am I gonna do that every single workout? Probably not. I just felt like doing it and because I could, I wanted to try it, so yeah. But at the same time, using just this one machine was able to hit my back from three, technically four different angles. So we started out a little bit higher, aiming for the little more upper, upper back, down to a more low neutral underhand grip row. So really targeting mid back and then into a more isolated single arm, really nailing down that lat. Um, and finished off as you just saw with the rear delt rows. So again, going back to the upper, targeting the rear delts. Just goes to show that with a single piece of equipment, you can use it to target far more than just one muscle group, depending on how you use it. But anyway, that's gonna be it for today. Let's do a quick pose down after I hit one more set, and then that's it. <laughs> Ugh. 
Ugh. Currently weighing in at an average about 187 fasted. So, yeah, not too bad. All right, so that is gonna be it for today. If you guys have any questions about anything, let me know. But yeah, just the inaugural workout for this piece in particular. My shirt is absolutely disgusting. I am not putting this back on which means that we did a good job today. <laughs> but I gotta get all this stuff wrapped up and then help her finish her workout because she's gotta get ready to go to work soon. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.